Good evening. Thank you, dear listeners, for joining us tonight. One hopes that you are within the cozy confines of a comfortable setting, as our foreboding narrative is about to unfold, soon to reveal a sinister labyrinth of ominous events. So sit back, close your eyes, and enjoy the chills that await you within this haunting tale, entitled Mr. Gradville. It was a quiet little town, like most other quiet little towns. It had its general store, its post office, its park, and town hall. And of course, its host of all the expected characters. And every once in a while, the unexpected. Yes, there were still tracks of mystery in the forgotten roads, the stretches of distant fields and far-off houses. From time to time, strangers would come and go. Relatives would visit from other lands, and there was enough variance to make an average day an interesting one, on occasion. As we shall soon find out, Linda Malloy lived with her husband, Tom, in a surprisingly large Victorian house. Surprisingly large, because only they occupied it. Linda had decided to move back into the family home after her mother found it too much to take care of in her later years. Linda loved the home and its memories, and she decided that that's where she would heretofore reside. The autumnal season had recently arrived and made itself increasingly known. The skies shifted into moody displays of foreboding overcast. Tempestuous winds blew the ever-changing foliage about as darkening clouds drifted over the watchful land. On this particular day, it was a quiet afternoon in town, and as the world went about its business and Linda went about hers, Oh, Marcy, I must have those new sheets. That autumn leaf design is just to die for. And they came right out in time for the season. No, 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 at the other store. At Silver's. Yes, that's right. Oh, you have? Yes, exactly, those are the ones. Oh, yes, and Marcy, you're making me feel guilty. Tom thinks I spend all day on the phone with you, and I... Oh, oh, Marcy, someone's at the front door. No, I'm not expecting anyone. I don't know, but our washing machine has been acting up. Maybe Tom called a repairman. Okay, Marcy, we'll talk shortly. Say hi to Harry for me. Okay, <laughs> goodbye. Yes, may I help you? Perhaps you could. Well, how so? I don't want to trouble you, but... I'm sorry, I'm not interested in buying anything. My dear... I'm not selling anything. Well, in that case, I already belong to enough organizations. I'm not here to have you join anything. And trust me, we're insured up to our necks. You are wise, then. But I promise you, I'm not in the insurance business. Then what do you want, may I ask? I happen to be looking for something. Oh, are you looking for a lost cat or something? Oh, no. Nothing like that. Well, then what are you looking for? Something that I've been searching for for quite some time. Perhaps, if you wouldn't mind, you would let me come in for a moment? Well, I... I can assure you, I'm quite harmless. Well, I suppose if you're not hawking any vacuum cleaners and you don't want me to join the latest garden club, then there must not be any harm. He was a peculiar-looking man, possessed of distinguished features and an almost Victorian sensibility regarding the fashion he wore and the way that he carried himself. His eyes seemed to absorb all that surrounded him, 
yet he remained singularly focused on his soon-to-be revealed calculated ambitions. Ah, a charming home you have. Quite sizable. This is my childhood home. My husband and I decided to buy it and move back in. It's been in the family for generations. Well, one should never take their surroundings nor history for granted, for they oftentimes inform us of who we were and who we are yet to be. Well, then I've been informed that I'm just your ordinary woman leading her ordinary life in her ordinary home. <laughs> oh, I think that there's a little bit of the extraordinary in each and every one of us. I see. Well, please sit down, Mr... Mr. Gradville. Mr. Gradville. Would you like some coffee, Mr. Gradville? I don't mean to trouble you, but perhaps tea? Coffee can have the peculiar effect of agitation on someone my age. No trouble at all. Tea it is. So that's what you're looking for? You're looking for a book? Yes, a book. Well, what kind of book? A very particular book. Well, it must be for you to have traveled all this way to look for it. You're lucky they started to put the freeway system in, and it got here just in time. Yes, but I... I still prefer to take the back roads. Well, shouldn't an antique bookstore be able to help you out? You know, they have one in this town. They might be able to... I'm afraid not in this case. For you see, it's more like a family heirloom. Uh, that is, I believe that it has stayed in your family. My family? Yes, Mrs. Malloy. It's come to my attention that one of your relations may be in possession of this particular book. And that book was very special to me a long time ago. And it still is. You see, I was acquainted with one of your relatives. Her name was, I believe, Verda. Yes, Verda. Great Aunt Verda? Exactly. We were in the same circle of friends, but she had moved away from this town unexpectedly. Consequently, we had lost touch with each other, and the years, as we know, wait for no one. And a handful of years can soon turn into a few decades before you know it, and, and here we are now. <laughs> you make time sound so... ominous. Well... She's long since returned, so why don't you just ask Verda herself for this book that you're looking for? Well, I must admit, we didn't part on the best of terms. You know how those things can go. Even though that was many, many years ago, one can hold on to the past just as if it was just yesterday. If you would be so kind, just to ask her about the book, I would so certainly appreciate it. Well... It sounds kind of far-fetched. I, I don't know what she'd think, but... Please, this is the number you can contact me at. Linda put aside the number that he had scribbled on a piece of paper, and she was left with an odd, vague feeling. One that continued to haunt her throughout the day. A feeling that the unknown and the unknowable had just entered her life. And as that day turned into evening, Linda's husband, Tom, arrived home from work. It was the strangest thing, Tom. Uh, lay it on me. Well, this older fellow just showed up at the front door out of the blue. But what's so strange about that? What was he selling? Nothing. Nothing? Well, what do you mean, nothing? Oh, it wasn't an insurance policy, was it? You didn't sign anything, did you? No, Tom, I didn't sign anything. Well, then what gives? What was it all about? He was looking for some sort of book. A book? Well, why the heck was he asking you about a book for? It was some sort of very old book that he was looking for, and he described the cover so that if I ever saw it, I would know exactly what it was. He said it had fallen into our family's hands. <sighs> Whose hands exactly? He thought that Aunt Verda might be in possession of it. Aunt Verda? That old bird? Oh, what a kook. Tom, watch what you say. That's my great aunt, and she's not a kook. Well, I differ on that opinion. You didn't let him in the house, did you? Mm, he seemed harmless enough. <sighs> well, 
You just can't let any stranger waltz in the door. You know that I'm cautious. Look, you never know these days. Well, he strongly believes that she may have the book. Hey, you're not going to draw her into this nonsense, are you? He claims that he knew her a long time ago and that he had left it in her care. Maybe he's after her money. I definitely didn't get that feeling. He was quite peculiar looking, but certainly not suspicious like that. What do you mean? Peculiar? Yes, the way he dressed, the way he presented himself, it was almost as if he appeared out of another era. Like out of a like out of a fogbound street in London long ago or something like that. <laughs> I'll be. And he'd left saying something rather strange. Oh yeah? What was that? He said, you can think you live thinking as you do, but fate will always have its way and will always make its way through. Eh, sounds like utter gibberish to me. I don't know. He seems sincere. Yeah, most kooks are. You're not really going to bother Verda with this, are you? Yes, Tom. Yes, I am. Well, don't let any of the bats in her belfry bite you. I'll pick up your prescription on the way there. Thanks. At least that makes sense. So, how's Tom doing, Linda? Oh, he's doing all right. Well, here's his medicine. Make sure he takes it regularly. It's very important. He's got to keep that blood pressure down. I'll do my best. You do that. Thank you, and have a good day, Dr. Green. Oh, Linda. Yes? One other thing. What's that? Some sort of a funny-looking fella came in here. One of my older customers mentioned that he looked kind of familiar, but just couldn't place him like someone he might have known from a very, very long time ago. Anyway, he was asking about you. Yeah, well, he found me. Well then, make sure Tom takes that stuff and no sloughing off with it. Linda! Oh my gosh, Marcy! You startled me. Sorry. Wow, you look like you had your head in the clouds. I kind of did. Well, back to Earth. Did you happen to pick up those sheets? Uh, no, not yet. L listen, I've got to run, but... I'll give you a call. You'd better get them soon. I bet they're going fast. There is a growing chill in the air, you know. I think there is. Great Aunt Verda's large weathered house sat on the edge of town, devoid of a vital life it once assuredly possessed. Its multiple windows, once portals to the buoyant life inside, now seemed like empty eyes to a soulless vacuum. As Linda approached it, its door stood like a foreboding gateway into an unknown, faded past. Linda, is that you? I haven't seen you for ages. Why, Auntie, I was here just a few weeks ago. Oh dear, it seems so much longer than that. Time, you just don't know where it goes. Well, I must admit this visit is a bit motivated. Well, I'm intrigued now. Come on in, Linda. If it's not too much trouble, Auntie. No trouble at all, dear. Oh, how interesting. How very interesting. Aunt Verda, are you sure you didn't know who I'm talking about? No, not that I can recall. It seemed like he definitely knows you. Or knew you. People can say anything, and they do a lot of that these days. And to think that anybody would be so interested in a book that they would bother others about it so many years later. Well, he insisted that it's a very special book. That its only value was of a very personal nature to him, and he was quite sure that you might have it. What was his name, you said? Gradville. Robert Gradville. I've never heard of him. <laughs> you sure didn't take long to think about that. I didn't need to think about it. I know what I know. He said that he left it in your care a long time ago. Just how long ago, dear? Well, believe it or not, almost 50 years ago. Well, that is a long time ago. Why on earth would he be so interested in a book from a lifetime ago? And why on earth would he be giving me something like that? He said that at the time, it would be safer in your hands. Safer in my hands? Sounds like a lot of malarkey to me. He probably doesn't even know me. Well, I wasn't sure myself, but I asked him to describe you, and he did. I still think it's all nonsense. Tell him to go look in a bookstore because he's mistaken. Okay. 
Are you sure? Sure, I'm sure. Look, dear, next time when you see a crazy-looking man with a cane and a bowler hat looking for a... Aunt Verda, how did you know? Know what? You just described him. Oh, well, well, I, I, well, it's just a lucky guess, that's all. That's probably what all people out of their minds look like. Linda, dear, why don't you run along and we'll catch up some other time. This whole conversation has exhausted me. That evening, the clouds hung low in the sky like an ominous, dominating veil, and the moon resided as a faint, pale orb somewhere in the infinite distance. Nestled in the dark landscape below, warm lights glowed in the Malloy's house in the foreboding night. So, uh, how'd it go with Batty Aunt Verda? Tom, she is not Batty. In fact, she was quite clear-minded. But yet, I'll admit, it was still all a bit strange. When I mentioned that man and the book, her demeanor noticeably changed. She said she didn't know anything about the book nor him, but I don't think she was telling the truth. She even described him and then dismissed it as a lucky guess. Why would Aunt Verda lie about such a thing? I doubt she's lying. She probably just doesn't remember. No, I don't think it had anything to do with her memory. Look, I'm sure she doesn't want to dig up past nonsense. Who would want Past nonsense. Past nonsense. That's it. What's it? The past. The attic. Tom, our attic is full of our family's belongings. If Verda says that the book isn't at her place, then it must be up in our attic. I think my mother mentioned that when Verda left town, she put a bunch of her stuff up there. After dinner, I'm going to take a look. Oh, come on, Linda. There's so much junk up there, it'd be like looking for a needle in a haystack. You can say what you want, but I'm going to do my darndest to find it. Ah, that screwball is going to get you all full of cobwebs for nothing. You'll probably never hear from that old coot again. He said he would return. Eh, don't count on it. Regardless of what you think, this is what I'm doing. Now find me a flashlight. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Tom's right. I can't believe all this junk up here. And I see that he snuck those run-down lawn chairs up here from the garage that I told him to throw out. And those old Christmas lights I told him to get rid of. Half of them don't even work. Dear Lord. Linda spent the better part of the evening searching through decades of weathered boxes covered in ancient dust. She found old magazines, forgotten dishware, broken furniture, outdated clothing, time-worn relics from bygone years, everything but a singular, mysterious book. And then, as the flashlight began to dim and her enthusiasm started to wane, she left her ambitions to fade in the old attic with all the other forgotten belongings. Find anything? Everything but what I was looking for. And those old chairs that I told you to throw out. Hey, they're still good chairs. Good for nothing. Well, what did I tell you? It doesn't matter what you told me. You're always telling me something. And my mother was always telling me something. You're no different than her. Linda. Linda, nothing. It's true. Defeated, the next day Linda dropped in at Marcy's house. A nice breeze was coming through the windows, and both were enjoying a cup of coffee during an easy afternoon chat. Marcy, I felt so foolish coming back down those attic stairs in front of Tom empty-handed. I just don't know what to make of any of this. Maybe that old coot is just a lunatic. Fact is, I don't really know who he is. You did your best. Well, my best wasn't good enough. (laughs) I remember playing around that attic when we were kids. Oh, those were the days. In fact, my mother would always joke with Verda about a secret hiding place underneath the floorboards. She would... Marcy! I forgot all about that! The secret hiding place! Linda, they were only kidding. We were just kids! They were trying to scare us. No, Marcy! Wait, I remember now. It's true. Come on, Linda, you must have been dreaming. It was no dream, Marcy. 
I was up there. I saw the little latch, but I never opened it. I never dared. I was too scared. Are you sure? Just as sure as I see you sitting there. Linda, where are you going? To make a little revisitation. Tom, did you get the new batteries for the flashlight like I asked? Oh, you're not going back up there, are you? I sure am. You've got to be kidding me. You haven't had enough? Not yet. God forbid I don't find anything this time. I'll look like a darn fool. I'm sure it was off in one of these corners somewhere. Linda moved the many boxes around, studying the floorboards underneath, eyes alert for that small latch that she prayed wasn't a mere phantasm. At times, she did feel a bit foolish again. Could the past weave memories that hadn't really existed? She wrestled with these thoughts until... Oh! Oh, my lord. So it was no dream. You find anything? You bet I did. A box? A secret box. How do you know that it's a secret box? Because it was hidden underneath the floorboards. Any box hidden underneath floorboards is a secret box. Okay, I won't argue with that. What's in it? How would I know until I open it? It's got a lock on it. I suspect you wouldn't have a key for it. I wouldn't know where to begin to look for one. Well, I guess that's what they make screwdrivers for. Ah, trusty screwdriver. Good for many things. Especially secret boxes. Okay, here we go. Be careful. There goes the lock. Mission accomplished. Well, with all that time you spent up there in that dustbin, you certainly have the honors of opening this. I just hope it's not someone's severed fingers. Well, you never know. Tom. Tom, it's a... it's a... It's a what, Linda? It's a... a book. You, you gotta be kidding me. Let's see. I'll be. You were right. He was right. You both were. It looks like it's been in there forever. He said it was a very long time ago. Do you think that this is the book he's talking about? I'll know when I blow all the dust off this cover. He described exactly what's on it. But it looks like it could fall apart if you even breathe on it. <sighs> <coughs> My word, the dust. <coughs> Tom, Tom, it is the book. It has the bizarre symbols exactly as he described them. This is it. This is it, Tom. Well, uh, what kind of book is it? What's in it? I don't know. Let me look. Why, it looks like recipes. Recipes? Or, or some sort of odd-looking math. Some sort of formulas. Wait, these are almost like... They look like... Spells. Spells? Spells? Like... Like witchcraft. Witchcraft? You gotta be kidding me. Let me see. Hmm. Yeah, it's... Not any kind of language that I've ever seen before. And get a load of those symbols. And some of these drawings are so unsettling. Even gruesome. What's this guy's name again? Mr. Gravestone? No, Tom. Mr. Gradville. Tom, something about this illustration seems very familiar. It's some sort of drawing of some kind of like a town square or something. Town Square. Tom, Tom, look at this. It does kind of look familiar. Why, it looks just like our... Town Square. Tell me if that isn't our bell that's been there for over 150 years. I'll be darned. Now I'm beginning to wonder just what is this fella up to. I'm going to take this to that antique bookstore and see what they have to say about it. Linda excitedly drove to the outskirts of town where the quaint bookstore was nestled in a tangle of skeletal trees, as if they were guarding the ages-old building. Her mind was filled with endless thoughts about the book, of possibilities, 
of uncertain intrigues of... Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Welcome to our fine store. We're quite a famous bookseller. Customers come from all over to see what we have to offer. We carry very rare editions of obscure authors that go quite a way back. Feel free to browse, of course, and if you have any questions. In fact, I do. Well, uh, I see that you do have something. If you don't mind, I'd like you to take a look at this book. Well, uh, that's definitely our specialty. Let me see what you have there. Huh. It looks quite interesting. Oh, be very careful with it. I certainly know my business. Why, indeed. A very interesting cover. It's quite old, isn't it? Certainly appears so. Why, it's... it's... What is it? What's the matter? I'm sorry. Is something wrong? I'm very sorry. I, I can't help you. What do you mean you can't help me? We're... Uh... Just not interested in this particular book. But I don't understand. Surely this book must interest you. It, it's very antique. It's... I'm afraid you'd be better off to take it elsewhere. I'm very sorry. Well, I never. Ma'am? Yes? I know that it's been in your family for a long time. Excuse me? So you do know about it? I never thought that it would resurface, that I would ever see it again. It's best that you quickly dispossess yourself of it. It's a history lesson that you don't want. I don't understand. It's just a book. I'm afraid that it's far more than that. Well, that's a very strange thing to say. Believe me, ma'am. Things could get quite a bit stranger. Can't you tell me anything about- I can tell you this. Put as much distance between yourself and that book. Do it as soon as possible. That's what I can tell you. So, how did your bookstore adventure go? Well, Tom, it was the absolutely oddest thing. When he opened it up, he had to do all he could to hide his reaction. Reaction? He practically turned pale. He looked like he was almost terrified. Maybe he was terrified of all that dust. And that's certainly not the only old book out there. Did he tell you how much it at least might be worth? He refused to tell me anything about it other than it had been in my family, and he said that I should get rid of it. Rid of it? Now that's an odd thing to say, especially for a book dealer. And one other thing, Tom. What's that? Going in there, I had the uncanny feeling that I was being watched. Watched? Watched going in and out of that store. It was a beautiful autumn day. The sky was an infinite tapestry of buoyant clouds and a slight breeze tickled the ever-changing trees. Linda was strolling down Main Street, her mind a puzzle of thoughts, when a disheveled figure lumbered up to her. It soon became apparent that he was already several drinks into his day. We know. Uh, excuse me? We know. I'm sorry, I don't have time for this, and I don't have any money. This ain't about the money, ma'am. I've seen him around town. He's coming back. Who's come back? Oh, what nonsense. Good day. He's coming back for the book. Wait, what did you say? I said, he's coming back for the book. The last time he was here was almost 50 years ago. They call it the Summer of Storms. The Summer of Storms? I've never heard of such a thing. You weren't supposed to. That was a long time ago. Most people in their right mind put it out of their mind. It happened around this time of year. Early autumn. Horrendous storms. Some say he and his evil doings caused those storms. And I believe that to be true. Evil? Evil, sure as I'm standing here. When? When was this so-called summer of storms? About a half a century ago. It was... Hey! Hey, where are you going? Linda entered the old town library. Inside, 
Antiquated shelves sagged under the weight of innumerable books. The librarian looked up from her desk. Her time-worn face bore many decades of a solitary life. Yet her eyes were as sharp and clear as ever. She lowered her horn-rimmed glasses and gazed at her visitor. Why, Mrs. Malloy, I haven't seen you here in ages. You've got a good memory. You still remember my name. Well, you know, I was a friend of your mother's. I don't think I've seen you in here since you were a child. It's certainly good to see you. So, what brings you here? Looking for a good book? Actually, I'm here to do a little research. Research? Yes, I had a bit of a peculiar visitor the other day. The librarian noticeably tensed up when Linda said that, but tried to quickly regain her composure. Linda couldn't help but notice the curious reaction. Things were definitely getting strange all around. Oh, that sounds interesting. A peculiar visitor. Well, we do have our share of them here, too. This was apparently well before my time, but do you recall a particular summer that had some really bad storms? Really bad ones? Ah, yes. That's something that I'll never forget. Such horrendous wind, such fierce lightning, such ear-splitting thunder. Sounds melodramatic, but if you were there, you might find that to be an understatement. Mm -hmm. And this was about 50 years ago? Yes, that sounds about right. Well, I'd like to look for any clippings from back then. What in heaven's name would ever interest you about that? Oh, you know, everyone has their odd curiosities. It certainly is an odd thing to be curious about. But very well, each to their own. Follow me. Linda painstakingly went through each daily newspaper of that time, determined to find what she was looking for, alert for any mention of an ungodly, fierce storm that had ravaged the area. But as she laboriously went through issue after issue, from summer into fall, her heart increasingly sank. No articles, not even a mention. She was just at the brink of giving up, when... Wait! Oh my gosh, this must be it. Severe storms terrorize area. Wow, look at those photos. It sure was a storm. And look at those gigantic trees it took down. More on page four. Oh, it knocked down a barn and even overturned some trucks. That was an ungodly storm. And wait, what's this? Something else. Alleged secret gathering inadvertently broken up by suspected poachers. The only evidence was a necklace found on the ground. How very strange. The next day, Linda's mind swirled with thoughts of yesterday's findings. At the grocery store for some early morning shopping, Linda found herself absent-mindedly staring at... <laughs> Miss Malloy, that tomato is as ripe as the day is long. Oh! Mr. Johnson. Sorry to give you a start. We just got them in this morning. Late summer is the perfect harvest time, and you're holding the perfect evidence of that. You have a good day now. You too. Now, I can't forget what I came in here for. Oh, and I should pick up some strawberries and... Linda. Why, Miss Helmsworth. Well, that's funny running into you so soon again. I hope I don't have any books overdue. <laughs> I'm afraid you just didn't run into me, and this is not a joking matter. Well, what could be so... Come over here where no one can hear us. Okay. Now tell me, what's this all about? It's about that peculiar gentleman of yours and his book. How would you... It doesn't matter how I know. Do you know why he's looking for that book? He obviously has his reasons. And it's those reasons that you should be very concerned about. The last thing this town needs is that man. Or that book. Neither should ever have reappeared. But it's just a book. How can it... It's much more than just a book, my dear. There are things that should never be unearthed again. And this is one of them. Well, then why doesn't somebody just tell me exactly what this is all about? This is what I can tell you. Pray that you are just a very, very temporary possessor of that book. 
That hideous volume has a history of unspeakable malevolence, and this town bore the horrible brunt of it. That sounds so... so... Well, what do you suggest I do with the book? I suggest that you should have never found it. Well, it's too late for that. He obviously knows that you have it now. All I can think of is to put it back wherever you found it, and leave the rest to fate. And whatever fate decides is what it will decide. It's like half this town is losing its mind. <laughs> I could have told you that a long time ago. Tom, I'm serious. But the librarian? Would have never thought that. Well, you don't ever truly know a person, do you? You know what? Why don't you just get rid of the darn book? They say once you lay hands on it, you become accountable for it. Who's they? Those who seem to know. Know what? Even more nonsense. No, Tom. I almost... I almost believe it. There's something very real, very dark about this book. And it's said that if any harm befalls it, the parties responsible will... Well, I just don't know anymore. Linda, they've got you hook, line, and sinker. I just don't understand why you don't just give it to that guy. Tom, that may be the worst thing possible. Do you know what could happen if I do that? No, I don't. And neither do you. And nor does anyone else. And I will tell you what will happen if you give him the book. Not a darn thing. It's all a bunch of monkey business. No, Tom. He may want the book. He may be thinking he's getting the book. But I will make the final decision. The next day, Linda took a long stroll through the quaint neighborhoods to Marcy's house. Dry leaves pranced down the sidewalks, and once green trees had begun to turn into delightful hues of auburn. Marcy, do you mind if I look at your photo albums? Oh, what's your sudden interest in them? I'm just kind of curious. Like the ones you have over there? Well, you wouldn't be interested in any of those. They go way too far back. But I got some with us in them from the good old days. Actually, I'd really like to see some of those older ones. Oh, those are nothing to look at. You know what, Linda? Why don't you come into the kitchen? I'd like to show you something. But what about the photo albums? Marcy, I feel like you're trying to keep something from me. Keeping something from you? Why on earth would I do that? I don't know. You're being ridiculous. Why I... Oh, darn. Linda, hold on. That may be an important call I've been waiting on. This was Linda's chance. She quickly eyed the large row of photo albums and plucked out what looked to be indeed the oldest one. Marcy was deep into her phone conversation, so Linda hurriedly started paging through the ancient photos. She knew Marcy's mother was a lifelong friend of her family's, and surely there would be something. And there it was. It was a group photo in a living room that she immediately recognized. Her great aunt Verda's house. Everyone was so young. And there, along with Marcy's mother, was Verda. Linda looked closer. Could it be the necklace Verda was wearing it sure looked like the one in the newspaper photo. A chill ran down Linda's spine. She looked at the other people gathered in the picture, and what she saw next stopped her heart cold. Sitting next to her was... Mr. Gradville. Well, I see you found what oh my you gosh. were looking uh, for, Linda. I'm sorry, I, ju I just had to... And you sure found the right page. Kind of explains everything, doesn't it? But why wouldn't you have told me? <sighs> I didn't want to get you any deeper in anything than you already were. Look, I have to admit something, Linda. I never told anyone this, but when I was a little kid, I overheard something that maybe I shouldn't have. My mother and her friends were discussing something that even in my little ears, I knew something wasn't right. Their tone scared me. I hadn't heard them ever speak like that before. And they were talking about something about meeting in some woods and also something about a book. I'll never forget that. Why didn't you tell anyone? Tell anyone what? And who would I tell? You haven't told anyone? Not a soul. Until now. It was something I'd as soon rather forget. I didn't even want to think that my own mother was something more than just my mother. That is so spooky, Marcy. 
You're not kidding. Especially to a young kid. Well, whatever the case may be, the past is back. Why are you hiding something from me, Aunt Verda? It's just such a long time ago and sounds like such nonsense. I've known a lot of people in my life, but I don't know him. Maybe he's thinking about your mother. I don't know. If I showed you a photograph, would that help? Uh, a photograph? Yes, I have one with me. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, here it is. Well, this seems like such poppycock, but let me put my glasses on. This man right here. Oh, yes, an odd-looking sort of character. He's sitting right next to you. You must have known him. Is that what you want me to say? Yes, I did know him. And truth be told, he was a very wicked man with very wicked designs on the world. And he got a number of people believing in his nonsense. And now he's back. And yes, I kept the book. I didn't know what to do with it. I hid it away. That's all I remember. So did you believe in his nonsense? We all did. It was a beautiful, peaceful day in the park. The sun was shining, and a symphony of chirping birds brought a much-needed change of surroundings for Linda as she sat on a bench, adrift in a whirlwind of thoughts. She tried to talk herself out of everything, even daring to believe that all these recent events were nothing but an unconscious flirtation with fantasy. A delirious daydream, a phantasm of the mind, a... Good afternoon, <gasps> Linda. Oh my gosh. My dear, don't look so surprised. I told you I would return. I, I, I never thought... You never thought what, Linda? That you'd see me again? Well, here I am. I, I... I... Fate, Linda. Fate. Fate and time always hold the upper hand. We deceive ourselves so foolishly believing that, that that particular day will never arrive. But alas, it always does. And here we are. And now, we have unfinished business to attend to. You have what I want, what I need. You have what will make destiny complete. Look, mister, that book you're talking about, I don't know who it belongs to. It belongs to me. That's what you say. As I made clear, if it's a monetary issue, I could make you a generous offer. That's not the point. Then what would it take? It would take the truth about this matter. The truth is that we are running out of time. You may be running out of time, not me. It looks like the weather may take a turn for the tempestuous these next few days. That can't help but revive a very special memory for me. Why, I remember it like it was yesterday, yet so very long ago. I will provide you a time and location to do what is right, to return what is mine. Oh. You can't be serious. You're not going to meet him tonight, are you? I'm very serious. Did you take a look at that crummy weather out there? And it's supposed to get worse. I've got an umbrella. An umbrella. You've got more to worry about than getting wet. And there's no telling what he could do. Oh, I thought he was just a harmless old man. The evidence is beginning to suggest otherwise. Look, Linda, I honestly don't know what any of this is all about. But I do know that this is completely crazy. You're not thinking of going alone, are you? This is something that I have to do on my own. Just me, myself, and I. No one else telling me what to do. Just like that. Just like that. I do have a plan. Yeah. I'm sure he does, too. The evening wind was decidedly picking up, a chilling symphony that dominated the night world. Linda's footsteps on the dry leaves echoed loudly in her ears as she apprehensively made her way toward her uncertain destiny. 
In the far distance, she could see a growing flicker of light. She stopped. What was it? Linda could see that it was some sort of small bonfire. Yes, this was where she was to meet. A hundred chills shot up her spine. Certain that she had not yet been seen, she could still turn back. But this was something that she knew she had to do, had to face. Yes, it was destiny, but hers alone. She cautiously continued, and as she slowly got closer, she began to make out a faint figure behind the ghoulishly dancing light of the flames. Closer and closer she got, and there he was, Mr. Gradville. He stood stone still, as if hypnotized, the fixed gaze of his unblinking eyes haunting in their unwavering stare. Linda's heart pounded louder and louder, beating a warning that she refused to heed. Linda entered the small clearing, twisted, barren trees surrounding her, as if the skeletal limbs were grasping for her very being. She stepped a little closer, feeling the increasing menace of the flames, her hand tightly clutching the book. Mr. Gradville greedily gazed at what she held, and the vile curve of a sinister smile appeared on his face, the countenance of a forbidding victory at hand. Linda got as close to the flames as she could, directly facing him across the fiery illumination. Mr. Gradville ghoulishly glowed with the spectral fury of the forbidding flames. He stared at her, the flickering shards of light dancing maniacally in his eyes. Well, I see that you have made a wise decision. I'm not sure what to call it. Then call it our destiny. It is not my destiny. I just found the book, that's all. I'm afraid that you are very much a part of it. Some of my family may have been, but not me. We are all family in this matter. <laughs> in your twisted mind. In my twisted mind. I'm afraid that your perspective regarding this matter is in grave error. For you do not realize the ecstasy of true power, the unyielding depths of dominance that it will bring, the power that will only serve to birth even greater heights of absolute being and desirous advantage. Sure sounds grim to me. Grim? No, my child, not grim at all. Mr. Gradville slowly looked up into the infinite night sky, and a sudden flash of lightning illuminated his frightful face. Then he held his hand out, palm up, ready to accept what he had been seeking for so long. And now is the time. The book, if you will. Yes, the book. Linda looked down one more time at the ancient volume, at its time-worn cover in her trembling hands. Her moment of decision was now irrevocably at hand. Slowly, ever so slowly, she brought her gaze back up to Mr. Gradville. He smiled a wicked grin. The fire itself crackled in increased glee in alliance with the evil proceedings, Mr. Gradville took a step forward. So did Linda. Closer. But just as Mr. Gradville's long, ghastly fingers were about to take possession of the desired book and seal the ultimate destiny, Linda let go of the ancient text. And in what seemed like an eternity, the book, as if caught between worlds, slowly fell into the fire. A look of ultimate horror swept Mr. Gradville's face as the blaze leapt up into the cruel night sky. Flames devilishly licked the cover, 
as the yellowed pages began to dance in cruel agony. His head rolled back as he stared heavenward, his countenance turning a ghastly pale as the essence of his soul seemed to evaporate from his very being. Then his eyes began to madly flutter, and his now frail body began to sway, as if in helpless subservience to the brutal night wind, rocking back and forth in a hypnotic state. Linda gasped as he suddenly began to teeter forward, for she could do nothing but watch. Then, in one final ode to his decimated ambitions, he plummeted straight into the very flames of his own design. The dreadful inferno enveloped him in an ungodly embrace of horrific demise. Flames surrounded him and leapt back up into the merciless night sky. And just as mysteriously as he had appeared in her life, so he disappeared in a horrific conclusion. And so the town returned to a sense of normality, as if nothing had ever happened at all. And Linda went about her usual life as best as she could. She even eased up on Tom about those old lawn chairs. And as for Great Aunt Verda, Linda visited her every now and then as she was apt to do. But Linda assuredly had some very interesting questions to ask her. Someday. They say sometimes fate is so thick you can feel it in the air. Well, that certainly held true in tonight's intriguing offering. And the journey certainly did come full circle. Not exactly in the way Mr. Gradville expected, of course. Fate apparently does have its mysterious way. And as for Linda, yes, she slept very comfortably in those new autumn sheets. And now when a visitor appeared at the door, she most understandably had second thoughts. Mr. Gradville was written by Mark Borchardt, starring Julia Axe and Dan Foster. Poster art by Lance Myers. Directed, recorded, and scored by Carl King. <laughs>